Coming up, we take a closer look at the final farmer's market of the year, and later, one Hawkeye faculty member was gifted an award for his work in assisting students. Iowa Wrestling Media Days was held on a farm yesterday. And it's safe to say it doesn't get any more Iowan than that. We'll have a season preview of Hawkeye Wrestling coming in five. Do we have a spooky forecast up ahead? Stay tuned for weather to find out what you can expect for tonight's trick-or-treating. All that more coming up on this Thursday morning edition of DITV. Don't go anywhere. DITV starts right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. I'm Noah Gowdy. Yesterday evening, Iowa City hosted its finals farmer, final farmer's market of 2019. DITV News Director Emily Callahan has a closer look at the Good Clean Midwestern Fun. On Wednesday, October 30th, vendors came together to host the final, very chilly, Iowa City Farmer's Market. But don't worry, there will be plenty more produce come the spring. For the past 47 years, Iowa City has been bringing together local vendors to provide that farm-to-table produce Iowa is known for. The fall season brings a variety of produce and baked goods, as well as a couple spooky goods just in time for Halloween. Even as the season closes out, vendors old and new alike express their love for the farmer's market. 30-year veteran Ela Miller spoke about how selling home baked goods at the market has affected her. There's just a lot of friendships that we have established and I don't know, I just love to see the blessing, being able to bless people with good quality home baked goods. Nicole Dawson, whose first season was this past spring, has found the market to be a great way to sell her eggs. The impact of the market has been great. I've met a lot of wonderful people, vendors, and customers, and I have a lot of loyal customers that I will continue to do egg delivery through the winter months. Undoubtedly, the farmer's market is a huge part of the Iowa City community, and hopefully it will continue to be for another 47 years to come. Reporting from downtown Iowa City, Emily Callahan, DITV News. The 2020 Iowa City Farmers Market will run from May through October, and registration for vendors is expected to open right around New Year's. A University of Iowa faculty member is gaining recognition after receiving the award for Volunteer of the Year from the International Education of Students Abroad. Doug Lee, Assistant Provost of International Programs at Iowa, was given this award after being recognized for his role in assisting students with the proper resources and information needed for their international studies and internships. Lee has been a Hawkeye for over 28 years, and this award reinforces the great job he has done serving the university outside of his normal hours. And while I was walking here to work this morning, I could find a lot of snow on the ground, and I'm not very happy about it, but let's toss over to Claire in the weather studio to find out more. Claire? Thanks, Noah. Luckily, the snow should not continue, but the temperatures will be very chilly. This morning, we have cloudy skies with a temperature of 28 degrees. Throughout the day, temperatures will rise and peak at 38 degrees. By this evening, temperatures will fall back down to 29, so if you're planning on celebrating Halloween, be sure to bring a coat. Tonight, we will have clear skies. Looking ahead to the weekend, we have fairly moderate temperatures up ahead. To begin the weekend, we will have cloudy skies with a high of 44 and a low of 30. Continuing into Saturday, we will see some sun and temperatures will stay about the same with a high of 42. Closing out the weekend and beginning into next week, temperatures will warm up with both Sunday and Monday having a high in the low 50s and the low in the mid to low 30s. So Hawkeyes, plan accordingly and bring a coat if you anticipate that you'll be outdoors for any length of time tonight. Noah, back to you. Thanks, Claire. Earlier this week, the NCAA unanimously approved a plan to move forward with allowing athletes to profit off their image and likeness. In response to this approval, Iowa Athletic Director Gary Barta has fir was firm in his skepticism to the, this law, saying, quote, It's my belief that there will become a national solution to this question. Nobody wants to be at a competitive disadvantage whenever there are that many state laws. It will be very difficult to remain competitive, so I believe there will be a national solution rather than a localized one, end quote. The NCAA Board of Directors aims to have legislation in place by the start of 2021. And some NCAA athletes who could benefit from that new law are the Iowa wrestling team. Let's toss it over to John and Kate in the sports studio to find out more. Guys? Thanks, Noah. That's right. Today we preview what might be the most highly anticipated Hawkeye wrestling season of the decade. Yes, John. Inject that wrestling coverage right into my veins. But first, 
A new MLB champion was crowned last night after the series went in to the beloved Game 7. For the first time in franchise history, the Washington Nationals were crowned as world champions. The Nationals were trailing for most of the game until a go-ahead homer off the foul pull and right by Howie Kendrick propelled the Nats into the lead 3-2. Washington then went on to tack three more runs and won 6-2. The crazy thing is throughout the seven games of the series, the home team failed to win a single game, and that's something that's never been done in the history of professional sports. But also yesterday, we traveled to Mount Vernon, Iowa to Crowell Farms, which played host to the 2019 Iowa Wrestling Media Days. There hasn't been this much hype around an Iowa wrestling team in a long time. But before we could get too far into our day, Coach Tom Brands wanted to remind everyone that it's just the media that's saying that. Did I say I closed the gap? I didn't say that. I think that we have the guys that are putting the work in every day. I'm not going to compare ourselves like every other year. Uh, people thought that I was bananas maybe for thinking we could win last year with that high-powered team that Penn State had. Uh, just because the media or the pundits put us in a close second-ranked um, category with Penn State doesn't mean that I put us there. Uh, but I know what I think of our guys, and I wouldn't trade our team for any other team. I love our guys. Well, when you have a two-time NCAA champion like Spencer Lee on the team, the expectations are always high. Wait, John, is Spencer Lee even going to wrestle for Iowa this year? I thought he was training for the 2020 Olympic Games. Well, Cade, you're not wrong. He's going to be training, but Brands cleared things up for us. Because I have, I'm focused on each day, you know. I, I can't worry about next week if I haven't finished today. You know, you only get 24 hours in a day, and it's what you do with them that counts, all right? And if I'm so worried about next Sunday or next, you know, whatever, then I'm not worried about it. I'm not doing the best I can to be the best I can be today, and that, that's all that matters. I'm, I don't care about uncertainty because I know I'm, I'm certain that I'm going to work my hardest today and be the best I can be, and then tomorrow comes, I'll, I'll worry about that then. It's my dream. Okay. It's everyone's dream. I'm just taking I mean, you, you ask a kid what they'd rather win in the Olympics, I mean, you're never going to get into the blitz. Wow, that's a lot of wrestling to worry about, but don't worry. Lee is focused. He's just going to take it one day at a time. Spencer Lee's uh, path to the Olympic Games will go through collegiate wrestling. Um, he will be heavily involved with this year. We're going to need him. Um, and and, and the, the thing is, is his best preparation for what he's trying to accomplish in Tokyo, uh, he knows that it's through those seven-minute matches. What Spencer is trying to accomplish is something that takes a lot of guts. He's going to try to continue his pace to be a four-time national champion while getting an Olympic gold medal in the middle of it all. He's already a, a legend in the Hawkeye community, but if Lee pulls it off, his legend status would be heard all around the globe. There are a lot of big headlines for the Hawkeyes, as we can see, but our last one for today is about Michael Kemmerer. If you like a good comeback story, listen to this. Kemmerer was an All-American two years ago, but after getting surgery on both his knee and shoulder, he had to miss all of last season. The senior from Pennsylvania is back to start this year, and there are a lot of people who are happy to see it. People ask me who looks good if you had to say one guy, and the guy that comes to mind for me is Michael Kemmerer. He's healthy, he's strong, he's a 74-pounder. You know, I know there's no place I'd rather be because I saw that other side of not being in the lineup and not being out there wrestling with my teammates and now I'm like uh, you know this is where I want to be this is what I want to be doing so it's it's awesome. With Kemmerer back in the lineup that means the Hawkeyes have seven All-Americans in their lineup and two others who qualified. The Hawkeye wrestling team is going to be very good this year so whether Tom Brands likes it or not there's going to be a lot of hype all season long. And if you want more wrestling content come back next week for more previews of Iowa wrestling before they host Chattanooga on Sunday November 17th. Noah we're going to go ahead and toss it back to you. Whoa guys I was not expecting that one but that's all we have for you on this Thursday morning edition of DITV. Be sure to head over to dailyiowan.com for all your latest news between Monday and Friday. If that isn't enough the Daily Iowan for you, be sure to check out our print edition of the news on Sands Now. For DITV News, I'm Noah Gowdy. Stay nice with it, Iowa City.